Well, we've got some important new details on the meeting between President Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin set to take place Friday at the G20 summit in Europe. Both the White House and the Kremlin are now confirming uh, just a short time ago here that the two leaders are going to sit down for an official bilateral meeting while at the summit. It's the first official meeting between the two leaders, the first face-to-face -face meeting period between these two men. And I want to bring in now CNN's Ivan Watson in Moscow. Ivan, what do we read about this? that this is a full meeting, this is a formal meeting, which is significant to say this is a bilateral meeting instead of what we would refer to as a pull aside meeting, just in a hallway on the sidelines of this summit. It's really important because you haven't had the U.S. and Russian presidents in a bilateral meeting since September of 2015, approaching nearly two years. The list of areas where Moscow and Washington have tension, it's really long. It includes the Ukraine conflict. It includes the Syria conflict. It includes fighter jets buzzing each other in many different theaters. Uh, and it includes more recent kind of examples of tension. Just a couple weeks ago, the U.S. slapping sanctions on dozens of additional uh, Russian uh, people and entities in relation to its uh, annexation of Crimea. In 2014, the Russians canceling uh, a meeting between a U.S. Undersecretary of State and a Russian de Deputy de uh, Foreign Minister uh, a day after that in a tit for tat move. It includes Russian anger at the U.S. shooting down a Syrian warplane just a couple weeks ago and ongoing Russian anger about two Russian diplomatic compounds that were seized by the outgoing Obama administration over allegations that Russia was intervening in the U.S. electoral process. So the list is a mile long and you have a top uh, Kremlin official saying that relations right now are at zero and that hopefully from the Russian perspective that a meeting could uh, help protect basically international stability at this stage. That's how dire they say the situation and the bilateral relations are right now. Brianna? The personalities in this, Ivan, are going to be, I think they're going to contribute a lot to the outcome of this meeting. I talked to one Republican lawmaker yesterday who said that he's expecting these two leaders to try to out-alpha each other. How much of that do you think we'll see? Yeah, we've got two men who uh, like to play up their macho personas, but, but there's another element to this, too. You have Donald Trump, who's a relatively new president, uh, who's going to be meeting with Vladimir Putin, who this will be his fourth U.S. president that he'll be meeting with. The levels of experience here, uh, the, the difference here is massive. Uh, Putin's been playing at this game. He's been a commander-in-chief, a head of state for, for quite a long time. And he's also coming from a position of strength. His base here, his support on the domestic political front is very solid. Yes, Russia has economic problems. It's, it's, it is suffering from sanctions. But he doesn't have uh, a real challenger here on the domestic front, whereas the Trump administration is quite new at this. It's facing challenges in the courts, in Congress, uh, on the streets. And... Uh, Trump has record low, you know, public opinion mm -hmm. figures as well back home. So uh, the big question, one big question will be, will, will uh, Putin try to take advantage of his vast experience and his position of relative political strength coming into this meeting? You know he certainly will try. Ivan Watson, thank you for your insight in Moscow for us. I want to talk about this big meeting. We really can't under, uh, overstate that. Uh, let's bring in our political panel to discuss this. Rebecca Berg, she's a CNN political analyst and a national political reporter for Real Clear Politics. Once again, we have retired Admiral John Kirby, a CNN military and diplomatic analyst. He's also the former Pentagon as well as the State Department spokesman. And Jackie Kucinich, CNN political analyst and the Washington bureau chief for The Daily Beast. Okay. I want to ask you, uh, with your extensive experience of just the protocol when it comes to the State Department and it comes to the executive branch, if you have two, these two leaders, they initially were supposed to have this informal pull aside, which signaled something. It sort of says, okay, well, we're just going to get together in a more casual way. Now it's been upgraded, we learned today, 
to a bilateral meeting. This is a formal meeting. What do we take away from that? So it'll be, you can take away a couple of things. First, uh, the agenda will probably be much more specific and much more formal. In other words, there'll be a list of topics for both sides to want to engage. You'll have opening statements by both guys, cameras in the room for those, for those opening statements, uh, maybe even some press statements afterward. Those are possible. But more importantly, you're going to have more people at the table, more people in the room, certainly more formal note-taking, uh, and a, a more, hopefully, a more comprehensive discussion about some of these big issues uh, that a poll side just doesn't give you the option. Usually they're very small. They're very, in a small room, only a couple of, uh, uh, of staffers there, uh, and usually there's no big record of, of what was discussed or any outcomes thereof. So I think it's just, it, it more formalizes it. And frankly, this is good for the president. This, you know, if, he, if, if he's well briefed and he's well prepared, Ivan's exactly right. Uh, Putin is, is a very experienced hand at this. If, if this formality, this structure, can actually work to the president's advantage. But Rebecca, we heard from the National Security Advisor, H.R. McMaster, uh, you know, we, we, John Kirby is saying if this is structured, this can play to his advantage, but McMaster was saying there's no specific agenda, he's going to talk about what he wants to talk about. What are some of the concerns that folks have if the president goes into this and he's winging it? Or does this sort of eliminate the chance that he will be ad-libbing? Well, color me skeptical, Brianna, that the president would actually be winging this meeting. I think what H.R. McMaster said publicly might be just him being a little bit diplomatic toward the president, giving the president his ultimate authority to talk about what he wants to talk about and set the agenda. We know that Donald Trump is not a president who likes to feel constrained or too tightly tethered um, to any sort of restrictions. And so this could be just his advisors trying to give him as much flexibility as possible. But you can bet that before this meeting, there is a great deal of preparation going on. His advisors are running down the options of things he can address. And certainly there are going to be issues that you cannot avoid addressing and the president will need to address no matter what, including North Korea, including Syria, potentially election meddling, um, although the White House has indicated he would not bring that up in this setting. Well, and the Kremlin has released things that they do want to talk about. They want to talk about these compounds that were seized. They want to talk about sanctions. They want to talk about... By uh, the Obama administration by the Obama in December. December. Yes, so right when at, they booted out Russian diplomats slash intel folks. Exactly. Um, they want to talk about the crisis in Syria. Uh, they said that they, one of the ways, one of the places they could have find some common ground is uh, fighting international terrorism. So the Kremlin has sort of set out their parameters. One thing we haven't seen, and what the White House has been has seemed to have indicated that is not going to be brought up, is election meddling. And while the president is under pressure here at home to discuss this and perhaps look Putin in the eye and pull an Obama and say, cut it out, he might leave that meeting and not do that. And what will be the fallout there? We just don't know. Can, to play devil's advocate to that, would it be, would he be the best messenger to say cut it out when it was only recently that he seemed to grudgingly accept that this occurred? It's a good point. It's, it's a really good point. But again, we're talking about, this is bigger than Donald Trump. This has always been bigger than Donald Trump about uh, the uh, Russia election meddling. So could he step back from that and perhaps mm -hmm. confront Putin? We don't know the answer to that question. Um, it doesn't seem like they're going there, though. Look, this even point. if it's unpalatable for him to talk about it from 2016's perspective, he could simply easily do this by going forward and say, look, we've right. got a midterm coming up in a year and a half. Got another one in 2020. You know, going forward, this is unacceptable. But boom, he doesn't necessarily have to fall back on what happened in 2016. Right. And another question, of course, from this meeting is, does Donald Trump offer the Russians any concessions? Does he offer Putin any concessions? Russia has been asking for this compound back um, that was taken from them as part of sanctions against Russia. Will Donald Trump offer that as sort of a peace offering? We're not sure. We know that he's asked staff for options. Among those include some sanctions relief. I look back to that Oval Office meeting that he had with the Russian ambassador and the Russian foreign minister where he talks about Jim Comey, calls him a nut job, and he reveals classified information that he really should not have. It was uh, information that was technically the property of the Israelis. So it was sort of a two-for-one misstep that he made there. Uh, if you are staffing President Trump and you're getting him ready for this, looking at that meeting, what... How do you try to redirect him going into this one? First thing you do is you, you determine, as Jackie rightly says, what matters to us? What, what major points do we want to get across uh, uh, to, to them? 
then you need to kind of red team it. You got to think about what they're going to come at you with. Here's what we expect Putin to complain about. Here's what we expect him to offer you and sort of figure out how you're going to go forward from there. But you've got to you've got to not only play offense, you've got to play defense in a meeting with these guys. They're very, very uh, crafty. Uh, I've been in plenty of the bilats between John Kerry and, and, uh, and Sergey Lavrov. They know what they're doing. Uh, you have to go in with a game plan and you have to go in with a sense of here's how when we walk out, here's what we want to say we did. Here's what success mm -hmm. looks like. And yet there's always an un unpredictable nature to these things with President Trump. He does like to be unpredictable. Yeah, and that, that, that is the wild card. But I'm sure his staff at this point is hoping that he sticks to the script. Because uh, you have to imagine they're going through a lot of briefings at, over, over this 4th of July uh, period. At yeah. this point. And you know he wants to do well here. He wants to perceive yes. as being done well. So we will we will see. All right. Thank you so much, panel. I do appreciate it. Rebecca Berg, Jackie Kucinich, and Admiral John Kirby. Thanks to